Section 34 of Gray's Anatomy, Part 3. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Anatomy of the Human Body, Part 3, by Henry Gray. Pulmonary Veins, Systemic Veins, and Veins of the Heart. 2. The Pulmonary Veins. Vena Pulmonalis. The pulmonary veins return the arterialized blood from the lungs to the left atrium of the heart. They are four in number, two from each lung, and are destitute of valves. They commence in a capillary network upon the walls of the air sacs, where they are continuous with the capillary ramifications of the pulmonary artery, and, joining together, form one vessel for each lobule. These vessels, uniting successively, form a single trunk for each lobe, three for the right and two for the left lung. The vein from the middle lobe of the right lung generally unites with that from the upper lobe, so that ultimately two trunks from each lung are formed. They perforate the fibrous layer of the pericardium and open separately into the upper and back parts of the left atrium. Occasionally the three veins on the right side remain separate. Not infrequently, the two left pulmonary veins end by a common opening. At the root of the lung, the superior pulmonary vein lies in front of and a little below the pulmonary artery. The inferior is situated at the lowest part of the hilus of the lung, and on a plane posterior to the upper vein. Behind the pulmonary artery is the bronchus. Within the pericardium, their anterior surfaces are invested by the serous layer of this membrane. The right pulmonary veins pass behind the right atrium and superior vena cava, the left in front of the descending thoracic aorta. 3. The systemic veins The systemic veins may be arranged into three groups, the veins of the heart, the veins of the upper extremities, head, neck, and thorax, which end in the superior vena cava, the veins of the lower extremities, abdomen and pelvis, which end in the inferior vena cava, the veins of the heart, coronary sinus, sinus coronaris, vv cordis. Most of the veins of the heart open into the coronary sinus. This is a wide venous channel about 2.25 centimetres in length situated in the posterior part of the coronary sulcus and covered by muscular fibres from the left atrium. It ends in the right atrium between the openings of the inferior vena cava and the atrioventricular aperture, its orifice being guarded by a semilunar valve, the valve of the coronary sinus, valve of the besius. Tributaries. Its tributaries are the great small and middle cardiac veins, the posterior vein of the left ventricle, and the oblique vein of the left atrium, all of which, except the last, are provided with valves at their orifices. 1. The great cardiac vein. Vein cordis magna, left coronary vein. Begins at the apex of the heart, and descends along the anterior longitudinal sulcus to the base of the ventricles. It then curves to the left in the coronary sulcus, opens into the left extremity of the coronary sinus, and reaching the back of the heart, opens into the left extremity of the coronary sinus. It receives tributaries from the left atrium and from both ventricles. One, the left marginal vein, is of considerable size, and ascends along the left margin of the heart. 2. The small cardiac vein, vein cordis pavi, right coronary vein, runs in the coronary sulcus between the right atrium and ventricle, and opens into the right extremity of the coronary sinus. It receives blood from the back of the right atrium and ventricle. The right marginal vein ascends along the right margin of the heart and joins it in the coronary sulcus, or opens directly into the right atrium. 3. The middle cardiac vein, vein cordis media, 
commences at the apex of the heart, ascends to the posterior longitudinal sulcus, and ends in the coronary sinus near its right extremity. 4. The posterior vein of the left ventricle, venus posterius ventricula sinistra, runs on the diaphragmatic surface of the left ventricle to the coronary sinus, but may end in the great cardiac vein. 5. The oblique vein of the left atrium, venus obliquus anthris sinistra marshalli, oblique vein of Marshall, is a small vessel which descends obliquely on the back of the left atrium and ends in the coronary sinus near its left extremity. It is continuous above with the ligament of the left vena cava, lig vena cava sinistra vestigial fold of Marshall, and the two structures from the remnant of the left cavarian duct. The following cardiac veins do not end in the coronary sinus. 1. The anterior cardiac veins, comprising three or four small vessels which collect blood from the front of the right ventricle and open into the right atrium. The right marginal vein frequently opens into the right atrium and is therefore sometimes regarded as belonging to this group. 2. The smallest cardiac veins, veins of Fabicius, consist of a number of minute veins which arise in the muscular wall of the heart. The majority open into the atria, but a few end in the ventricles. End of section 34